Hey guys, Adam here. In today's video, I'll be giving you my reasons for choosing to shoot in manual focus over autofocus. Even with all the latest Sony releases and the fancy touch focus and all these incredible capabilities, I'll always prefer to focus manually, and I think you should learn how to do it too. Here's why. Apart from this clip that you're watching right now that I am recording on autofocus here in my office, any of my work that you may have seen is always done manually. Honour and protect you. Through the good times and the bad. I will be your shoulder to cry on when things get tough, and I will be your dance partner when it's time to celebrate. The presence of God and our family and friends, I offer you my promise to be faithful. Through each other's eyes, we see the world anew. And I've shot with an array of different lenses over the years, but the one consistency is that they have always been fixed length prime lenses, and I've always used them manually, even if they are capable of good autofocusing. Now, as a wedding videographer, my goal is to capture as many moments from our wedding day as possible, be it emotional moments, moments of joy and laughter. I don't want to miss anything because I was too busy deciding which lens to use or how far to zoom in and compose my shot. I just want to be able to pick up the camera and shoot without all that indecision. Hence one lens and one fixed focal length. And after some practice, you become a master of that one lens and it becomes instinctive to use. It's the same principle with focusing. In manual, I'm in complete control of what is sharply in focus and what isn't. I don't have to worry about whether the autofocus has caught the subject or whether the correct part of the frame is in focus. And I know these cameras are really good these days, but every now and again, it does miss. And I don't want to rely on that. I don't want to be paranoid. I, I, I would be paranoid about letting go of that control. And again, with practice, manual focusing will just become instinctive and you'll know how to control that focus ring like it's an extension of yourself. And once you've mastered that, you can really start to nail a advanced moves like the perfect pull focus or tracking the bride down the aisle. These type of shots, I believe, just don't look as natural or smooth when you do them automatically. I always use the analogy of learning to drive a car. If you learn in manual, you're capable of both manual and auto. If you learn in auto, you'll never be able to use manual. So with this mindset comes total control and then you don't need to worry about the newest cameras or the fanciest features or the most expensive lenses that cost the earth. You can use any prime lens and be confident that you'll always be able to control the focus. To be honest, some of these older, more vintage lenses have a really nice old school film kind of quality to them as well. So you can open up your horizons to that vintage look and they're often very, very cheap. I personally use the Sony Zeiss 55mm f1.8 lens. You can see that uh, fantastic lens. This is really good for this. This does autofocus really well, but I shoot manually with it, and I like to be able to control that focus ring. But it's a cracking lens and a brilliant focal length. So that's linked below. I really like that lens. But but the beauty of shooting manually is that you can get away with any lens. You're much more flexible in your lens choices, and you can often save yourself a few quid. Now taking the plunge with this can be daunting. And if there's one specific question that I hear all the time, it's how do I track the bride when she's walking down the aisle and keep her in focus the whole time because this is a key shot right and the same motion applies to the exit from the church or walking through a confetti tunnel and the obvious answer is practice makes perfect over time you will find this easier and easier but the honest secret and this is one of my favorite things about shooting manually is that you don't always have to be perfectly in focus as long as you are filming at a nice open aperture such as f 2.8 or higher then the depth of field of your focus will be pretty shallow and so everything that isn't in focus becomes really blurred and that's where you get the nice bokeh kind of effect and it looks really milky and dreamy and soft and it's an effect that really lends itself well to wedding videography. It looks quite cinematic. So my advice would be when you stood at the top of the aisle waiting for the bride to walk down or for any shot for that matter, find a point of focus somewhere between your camera and your subject. 
and hold your focus there. Find a point in the middle and hold your focus there and let the subject walk into focus. And if you don't get it totally right and they dip in and out of focus as they're walking towards you, then it will gain that dreamy, free lensing kind of effect that is cinematic. Trust me, it, it'll work. And by the time you've edited that footage and delivered the film to the couple, nothing's going to look amiss. So that's why I believe it's really important to master manual focusing. It's just a really good skill to have. I hope this was helpful. If you have any thoughts or questions, then comment below. And I would really appreciate a like and subscribe if you'd like to see more from me. Thanks for watching. I will see you next time.